guys welcome back to my channel i am back with another video in this video i'm going to give a one year update of me working at dakota a little backstory i took my test and passed my test in december of 2020 i applied for my license the day after i passed the test the post office lost my application fee i mean lost my application so i had to reapply I did not get my license until February of 2020. Got the whole process from taking tests, passing tests, and applying for my license. I was applying for jobs as well. My first job interview was in December. From January through April, I filled out so many applications. I mean, like four pages front and back of applications. I will always write the day I applied, um, what company I applied for, where the location was, just for references for myself so my plan was to move anyway so i was gonna live with a friend for a few weeks until my apartment was ready first job was an hour away from where um where i live but of course um but i went with it because um they gave me an opportunity they came with a good offer and three i needed the experience so i went with it when I accepted the offer, I was told that I was going to get a mentor. So once she graduate or even before graduation, well, at least my teachers, they recommended that you get a mentor when you start your new job into the field, at least for a few weeks or a month or so until you get your feet wet, get the groove of everything. I was so, I was promised a, a mentor. My first day there, I do not have access to documentation system i cannot clock in and then three i do not have a mentor and four i have a full schedule so a full schedule i had like six i had like seven no six to seven patients that is basically like a full schedule my friend who was supposed to mentor me she's like wait a minute you have a full schedule how am i supposed to mentor you if you have a full schedule and i have a full schedule so yeah it was no mentoring so basically i had to get in and do what i had to do remember i did not have access to a documentation system so i had to write all of my notes down when i could or when i saw my friend throughout the hallway i would have like i would stop her and ask the questions like hey what am i supposed to do with this patient like because when i did not have access to documentation i could not see anything about the patient's goals what their current level is I was able to use my friend laptop for like a few minutes to view the charts, but I didn't have time to actually read the patient chart. So four weeks later, my friend ended up leaving the job. So I'm by myself. I am now the only coder in this facility. And there's one OT who is the supervisor. So she's treating and I'm treating, but being that she's a supervisor, she's only seeing about four to five patients a day. And that leaves me seeing 15 to 16 patients a day. So all of my treatment sessions were 30 minutes. Every now and then I would have like 45 minute sessions with a Med B patient. I had group sessions every day. I had to learn how to do group sessions on top of learning documentation and then keeping up with productivity. So I started in May. My friend left the end of June. And yeah, by July I was fully on my own seeing 15 to 16 patients a day if i had prn help that came in i would still had a full day maybe 13 to 14 patients so basically i just got like mentally drained at my first job as a coda um i was working an hour away and yeah seeing that many patients a day especially for me as a new grad it was just a lot no help and not to mention like the caseload was heavy and when i mean and when i said heavy i mean heavy as in the patients had a lot going on with them so out of my 15 patients i would have i would have maybe like three patients that were easy patients to treat the rest were very complex so i would just become mentally drained and mentally exhausted i did not know how much more i could take so now we into August and I'm like, okay, I cannot do this anymore. I need to find something better. So around in August, I started applying for jobs. Now I do know that people always encourage and recommend 
that you stay on a job for at least one year but mentally i just it was not working for me at my first job i may do another video about why i really had to leave my first job not saying that what i'm telling you guys now isn't the reason why it is the reason why but it's other things that was going on at my first job that i just i had to go so in august i started applying for jobs i could not find any jobs full-time close to home i finally got another job but it was not full-time it was prn so i started that job in october but being that my full-time job was an hour away and my prn job was close to the home it was like maybe 15 to 30 minutes away so when you work prn you're hired through a company and once you're prn you can work in any of the any of those buildings that that company owned so most of the buildings that that company owned that i was hired for that i am still employed for are are within 15 to 30 minutes away from me so i really couldn't even start working prn because I mean, I could work PRN, but my PRN gigs were only on weekends because when I get off, by the time I get home, it's 5 o'clock. Nobody wants to do therapy at 5, 30, 6 o'clock. So at that time, I was only doing PRN on the weekends. And then September come, and I'm still like, I cannot take it anymore. I have to go. So I kept applying. I grabbed another PRN job. So now I have two PRNs. So I was like, okay, I'm going to try working PRN for time. What I did, I, with my two PRNs that I snagged up, I ended up putting in my month notice as a coder at my full-time job and just decided to go with PRN at my full-time job. So around the end of November, one of my PRN jobs started canceling me. So with PRN, like I said, you're only as needed. So I lost like three days of work. Because at that PRN job, I had scheduled to work eight hours that day. And yeah, they counseled me for those three days. So I did not have any work for those three days. So I was like, oh my gosh, so this is not working out. I need to find something full time. And thank God, he sent something my way. Like a week later, I got a phone call for a full time position, which is where I work now. It was less than what I was making at my former full time job but it was closer to home. And at that time, I just wanted something with stability because I was getting nervous because I was getting counsel on a lot of my PRN jobs. So I started my new full-time job in December and we was really busy. I was getting eight patients a day, getting eight hours. So that was a plus for me because like I said, at my first job, I was seeing 15 patients a day and I was exhausted. And now at this new job, I'm only seeing eight patients a day, getting my eight hours because we were seeing one hour treatment sessions. So then it starts to dwindle down. In January, my job got hit with COVID. A lot of the employees and the patients were testing positive. So they cut the emissions and the caseload just started going down so in january was the start of the new cuts for all assistance they made cuts for reimbursement and that's this is basically where i'm at now so from january until now at my full-time job the caseload has been really really low i am not getting my full hours i'm working 34 hours a day what i've been doing to get by is working a lot of prns so and where do i plan on going next I've been working in a skilled nursing facility for one year. Even my PRN jobs are in skilled nursing facility. I've been thinking for the past few weeks and plus with things that have happened at my new job with the caseload just being so low and the hours of being so unsteady, I've been thinking about trying a different setting out just to see how other settings are. And plus as a new grad, I really haven't found like what i really love doing like some prefer to work in peace some want to work with adults some want to work only with stroke patients some only want to work with ortho I'm keeping my eye on home health i'm thinking about um working in a hospital 
but I also know in the hospital they do not pay as well as the skilled nursing facility and I kind of don't want to you know lose money I know money isn't everything but um money pays the bills around here okay and I um, definitely want to try outpatient. So I just think with my first two experience working full-time in a, skill, a skilled nursing facility, I think it's just time for me to try a different setting. I will still keep my PRN jobs because I love my PRN jobs and plus the money is good. Um, do I see myself retiring in this field? No. I'm just gonna be honest, I do not see myself working in this field long term, but I do see myself keeping my license active just in case. But yeah, I'm gonna stick it out for a few more years until wherever God decide for me to go. I've been in healthcare since 2014. I went from working in group homes, working in um case management so i do see myself branching out of healthcare or trying something different um but i don't know i'm gonna stick it out it's only been one year i think that's pretty much it so i will see you guys for another video and i hope you like this i hope you like this video so yeah again this is all i have for this video if you have any questions or if you just want to show some love please comment below and i will see you guys for another video